Democracy is a Greek word that means popular rule. The Greeks laid the foundation for democracy way back in 508 BC in Athens. Why is democracy a popular form of government? Although there are variations even in the concept of understanding and the practice of democracy, there are two underlying principles that are universally accepted. Equality and freedom. We will follow along the stories of the two countries mentioned earlier and understand this further. Salvador Allende was a member of the Socialist Party in Chile and was actively involved in his country's politics for over 40 years before getting elected its president in 1970. Allende was one of the rare politicians who was fearless and free of corruption and took some bold steps for the betterment of the poor. He redistributed land to the landless farmers, reformed the educational system, provided free milk for children and opposed foreign companies taking over his country's natural resources. The richer sections of the country, including the landlords and other political parties, big businesses and even the church, did not like his policies. Among those unhappy with Allende's people-friendly policies was the government of the United States. The United States was interested in Chile's mineral wealth, including the vast deposits of copper. Since Allende was not willing to give foreign companies access to his country's resources, the United States decided to support a more business-friendly government. The United States financed a military coup led by General Augusto Pinochet of the Chilean Army. The coup was staged on the 11th of September, 1973, beginning with the military commanders ordering Allende to resign or leave the country. Allende refused and instead addressed the nation on radio, warning the people about the corrupt military officers. By doing so, he endangered his life. The Chilean army bombed President Allende's office and killed him. General Augusto Pinochet installed himself as the president of the country and ruled it for 17 years. Did you know, on the 12th of October, 1999, General Parvez Musharraf, the chief of army staff in Pakistan, led a peaceful coup against Nawab Sharif, the then prime minister, and ruled the country for nine years before resigning. Pinochet's rule over Chile was a brutal regime. Torture, kidnapping and disappearance were some of the tactics used against those opposed to the coup. Amongst the people who opposed the coup and wanted democracy to be restored was General Alberto Bachelet. General Bachelet was subsequently imprisoned and tortured on Pinochet's orders. His family was also imprisoned and tortured. The same fate awaited anyone who dared to criticize the government. More than 3,000 people were killed by the military in this way. Pinochet's military dictatorship was in its last stages in 1988. Interestingly, General Pinochet held a referendum anticipating that the people will approve of his further rule. Instead, the people of Chile voted against Pinochet decisively. Political freedom was finally restored in 1990 and Pinochet was tried in the court of law for crimes against humanity. Since then, Chile has held 
four presidential elections successfully. In 2006, Michelle Bachelet became the country's first woman president. This was another twist of fate as Michelle Bachelet is the daughter of General Alberto Bachelet, who was imprisoned and tortured after the coup. Now, let us take a look at another country on our list of democracies, Poland. In 1980, Poland was ruled by a communist party known as the Polish United Workers' Party. During this time, Eastern Europe was governed by the Soviet Union, also known as the USSR, a vast and powerful communist state. Under the communist regime, all factories and big property were owned by the government. Strikes to show grievances were illegal. And so were independent trade unions that looked after the well-being of the workers. The press was hugely censored and the people who criticized the government were imprisoned. The revolution for democracy in Poland was started when a woman, a crane operator, had been wrongfully dismissed from service. Workers in the Lenin shipyard staged a strike and asked for her reinstatement. Although the strike was illegal, the workers held on. The strike workers were joined by a former electrician of the shipyard, Lake Walesha. He had himself been dismissed from service a few years ago. The strike began to spread across the whole city. Now, the workers started making larger demands including their right to form independent trade unions. They also demanded the release of political prisoners and an end to censorship of the press. The movement became so popular that the government had to give in to their demands. The workers led by Wallachia signed a 21-point agreement with the government and a new independent trade union was formed called Solidarity. This was only a minor victory for Solidarity, as the government led by General Yaruzelsky later imposed martial law and imprisoned a large number of members from this group. The freedom to organize, protest, and express opinions was once again taken away. However, Solidarity kept gaining popularity over the years and another round of negotiations in 1989 between Malaysia and the government resulted in an agreement for free elections. Solidarity contested all the hundred seats of the parliament known there as the Senate and won 99 of them. In 1990 Poland had its first presidential elections in which more than one party was allowed to contest. Lech Walesha, the electrician who was responsible for the Solidarity Movement, was elected the president of Poland. All this happened around the same time as Chile's struggle for democracy was taking place. People in both the countries fought against their governments for bringing in democracy. Chile was a military dictatorship, while Poland was ruled by a communist political party. Chile witnessed a transition from democratic to non-democratic and back to democracy, whereas Poland witnessed a transition from non-democratic to democratic. There were many differences between the two governments. The government of Poland 
claimed that it was ruling on behalf of the working classes, whereas the military dictatorship of Chile under Pinochet made no such claims and supported foreign businesses. The similarities, however, were striking. The people could not choose or change the rulers. There was no freedom of expression. The people could not form political associations or organize peaceful protests and could not take political action. On the other hand, democracy is a form of government that allows people to choose their leaders. In a democracy, only the leaders elected by the people govern the country. People have the right to express their views and grievances, freedom to organize, and freedom to protest peacefully. In the previous module, you had an overview of how democracy spread in the 20th century. We will carry the discussion forward and see the different stages through which democracy developed into its current form. The French Revolution in 1789 inspired popular revolutions across Europe against the existing monarchs of the time. The quest for democracy during this time was limited to freedom and equality. But the meaning of equality differed in different countries. For example, the United States initially did not allow anyone to vote. African Americans all over the country did not get the right to vote until 1965. Similarly, in France, women received the right to vote only in 1944. Many European countries that were becoming democratic did not have complete adult franchise. In other words, the struggle for democracy started with the rights for white men in the United States and France, and it took a lot of time to trickle down to the rest of the population. In the later years, primarily in the 20th century, the struggle for democracy included the right to vote to be granted universally to all adults, men or women, rich or poor, white or black. This is termed as universal adult franchise or universal suffrage. Observe the screen to see when universal suffrage was granted in various parts of the world. The earliest example of universal suffrage was New Zealand, where every adult had voting right by the year 1893. You may recall that many countries became democracies by the year 1900. These countries were indeed democracies, but the governments were elected mostly by men. And in the case of the United States, mostly white men. You also studied that countries in Asia and Africa were colonized by European nations. All these countries became independent. They also wanted the liberty to choose their own leaders. Many of these countries became democracies immediately after the Second World War in 1945. Few countries like India had succeeded in maintaining a democracy till date. Other colonies across Asia and Africa were not able to sustain democratic governments. For example, Ghana, a country in Western Africa, Ghana was a British colony and was called the Gold Coast as it had rich gold reserves.
Ghana was also amongst the first African countries to gain independence in 1957. Kwanem Nkrumah was an active revolutionary in the independence struggle. He became the first Prime Minister and then the President of Ghana. The democratic tradition here, though, was short-lived as Nkrumah elected himself President for life. Subsequently, he was overthrown by the military in 1966. Many countries in Africa and South America suffered a similar fate. More recently, around 1980, democracy was revived around the world, beginning with several countries in South America. This process of world democratization was accelerated by the collapse of the Soviet Union, which controlled much of Eastern Europe. You may also recall from our earlier discussion that Poland had democratic elections in 1989. The breakup of the Soviet Union into many independent countries led to major changes in the political map of the world. During the same time, Changes also took place in our neighboring countries like Pakistan and Bangladesh. These countries struggled and transformed themselves into democracies from military rules. However, Pakistan slipped back into military dictatorship in 1999 when General Parvez Musharraf led a military coup against Nawaz Sharif the then Prime Minister of Pakistan. Similarly, in 2005, Gyanendra, the new King of Nepal, dismissed the democratically elected government and restrained political freedom that the people had struggled to achieve for so long. However, about 140 countries held multi-party democratic elections in the year 2005. This number was higher than ever before. Yet, many countries, including powerful nations like China, North Korea and Burma, are still non-democratic. These are countries where people can neither express their opinion freely nor elect their leaders. Myanmar, previously known as Burma and also a neighbor of India, is a case in point. It gained independence from Great Britain in 1948 and became a democracy. Democracy in Myanmar did not last very long as the country was taken over in a military coup by General Ni Win in 1962. In 1990, the country made another democratic stride by holding free and fair elections after almost 30 years. The National League for Democracy led by Aung San Suu Kyi, won the election. As a result, these elections were not recognized by the Myanmar military, which placed Aung San Suu Kyi under house arrest and dismissed the election results. What followed after this and continues till day is imprisonment and torture of political activists or anyone who's critical of the regime.
due to the repressive military government in Myanmar. About one million people have fled the country and have taken refuge elsewhere. Aung San Suu Kyi continues her campaign for democracy in Myanmar. And in 1991, even won the Nobel Peace Prize for it. However, the country is still struggling to return the rights of the people. As you must have noticed, if the democratic tradition in a country is weak, then the gap is usually filled by stronger sections of the populace. A major restructuring of the political systems of the world happened during the 20th century. We will follow the growth of democracy as it happened around the globe during this century. If you look at the world maps dating back from 1900 to 1950, some evolving patterns of democracy are evident. Some countries that had established democracy during the 1900s were the United States and Canada in North America and the United Kingdom, France, Norway and Greece in Europe. In South America as well, major countries like Chile, Argentina, Bolivia and Peru were ruled by democratic governments. However, the democratic tradition in South America was not very well grounded, unlike the United States or the United Kingdom. Hence, by the 1950s, most of the countries here came under the sway of military dictatorships. Moving over to Asia and Africa. None of the countries here had a democratic government. If you recall, most of the countries on these continents were colonized by the Europeans during this time. By the 1950s, some countries in Asia gained independence and subsequently formed democratic governments of their own. For example, India and the Philippines, Japan also became a democracy from a monarchy around the same time. However, Japan has the unique distinction of being one of the few countries which were never colonized. Another major country which became a democracy around the 1950s is Australia. African nations were still under the colonial rule or were ruled by self-servicing military despots. The impoverished nation of Botswana was the only country in Africa that had a democratically elected government. On the other hand, European countries were moving fast towards democracy, except the East European bloc, which was under the USSR and the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Did you know? By 1991, the USSR and Yugoslavia disintegrated into several nations, most of which are now democratic countries. By the year 2000, African countries started their transition towards democracy. Some major countries that are still non-democratic are North Korea, Myanmar, and China in Asia, Saudi Arabia in the Middle East, Peru in South America, Morocco, Libya, Somalia and Sudan in Africa.
and Pilaris in Europe. Some key points become clearer after having studied these maps. Democracy spread throughout the world during the 20th century. Democracy did not spread evenly in all parts of the world, but in different regions and in different phases. It was established first in North America and Europe, and then it spread across Asia and Africa. While a majority of the countries are democratic, there are still large parts of Africa and Asia that are not democratic. As you have learned in earlier modules, democracy is growing in the world. What we refer to here is the democratically elected government within a country. However, is it possible to have a world government as well? What would happen if there was one government that would make decisions on behalf of the entire population of the world? Would the people in such a scenario still have the basic political freedoms and elect their representatives? As a matter of fact, there is no such government, but there are many institutions in the world that perform the functions of such a government to some extent. These organizations cannot order the countries like the way a government does, but it can influence the government to take action that will promote peace in that region. The primary organization that plays this role is the United Nations. Why is the United Nations necessary? The United Nations, which is headquartered in New York, was formed after the Second World War in 1945 to maintain peace and security around the world. This organization was formed after there had been tremendous devastation due to the First and Second World Wars, which adversely impacted most countries in the world. The United Nations is a global association of nations of the world. The United Nations is a global association of nations of the world that cooperate with each other to maintain international law, security, economic development, and social equity. The United Nations makes laws and rules to govern the seas that do not fall within the boundaries of any single country. It takes steps to control environmental degradation by making conventions that are binding on member nations. Can the United Nations also help if one country attacks another unjustly? The UN Security Council, a division of the United Nations, is responsible for maintaining peace between countries. The point to remember here is that the United Nations cannot interfere in the internal political problems of a country. In other words, it can only facilitate peace between two countries with the help of volunteer troops from member countries. It can also take military action against the offenders. Another organization that is global in nature is the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. While the IMF can bail out countries from their international while the IMF can bail out countries from their international debts, the World Bank is responsible for giving loans for development projects around the world. However, there are certain conditions that come along. For example, the beneficiary government has to straighten its books of accounts and make some changes in its economic policies. Do you think such organizations and the decisions they make are democratic? Various international institutions 
that perform some of the functions of a world government make democratic decisions, usually by voting. So far, the resemblance to a normal democracy is visible. But does every member country have free and equal say in the decisions that affect them? Let's try and understand more with the help of examples of the different organs of the UN. The UN has 192 member countries and each country gets one vote in the UN General Assembly. It meets regularly in yearly sessions under a Secretary General who is elected from among the representatives of the member countries. So far, this organization appears very democratic. However, the General Assembly cannot make any decisions about what action should be taken in case of a conflict between two countries. Only the 15-member Security Council of the UN makes such crucial decisions. The US, Russia, the UK. The real power lies only with the five permanent members. These permanent members, particularly, only a permanent member has the power to veto. So here is the situation. If all the 14 members of the 15 decide on an action, in this scenario, would you say that? Let's move on to another international organization. The IMF has 185 member nations. However, again, just like the UN, its members do not have equal vote. Nearly 54% of the voting power rests in the hands of only 10 countries. The US, Japan, the UK. The remaining 175 countries have very little say in how the decisions are made in this organization.